you're watching the History Fella channel. In this video we're looking at the Battle of Drury's Bluff. The Battle of Drury's Bluff, also known as the Battle of Fort Darling or Fort Drury, took place on May the 15th, 1862, in Chesterfield County, Virginia, as part of the Peninsula Campaign of the American Civil War. Four Union Navy warships, including the ironclads USS Monitor and Galena, and the United States Revenue Cutter Services, ironclads USRC Nugatuck. These steamed up the James River to test the defences of Richmond, Virginia, the Confederate capital. They encountered submerged obstacles, and the batteries of Fort Darling at Drury's Bluff inflicted severe damage on Galena, forcing the ships to turn back. In the spring of 1862, Union Major General George B. McClellan launched an amph amphibious operation against Richmond by landing troops at Fort Monroe and then marching northwest up the Virginia Peninsula. After the fall of Yorktown and the withdrawal of General Joseph E. Johnston's army up the peninsula, only the Confederate Navy ironclad CSS Virginia prevented Union occupation of the lower James River and Norfolk. When the Confederate garrison at Norfolk was evacuated by Major General Benjamin Huger on May the 10th, Commodore Josiah Tatnall III knew that he could not navigate Virginia through the shallow stretches of the James River towards Richmond. So she was scuttled on May the 11th off Craney Island to prevent her capture. This opened the James River at Hampton Roads to Federal gunboats. The only obstacle protecting Richmond from a river approach was Fort Darling, on Drury's Bluff, overlooking a sharp bend seven miles downriver from the city. The Confederate defenders, including Marines, sailors and soldiers, were supervised by Navy Commander Ebenezer Farrand and by Army Captain Augustus H. Drury of the Southside Heavy Artillery. The eight cannons in the fort, including field artillery pieces and five naval guns, some salvaged from Virginia, commanded the river for miles in both directions. Guns from CSS Patrick Henry, including an eight-inch smoothbore, were just upriver and sharpshooters were gathered on the river banks. An underwater obstruction of sunken steamers Pilings, debris and other vessels connected by chains was placed just below the bluff, making it difficult for vessels to manoeuvre in the narrow river. On May the 15th, a detachment of the US Navy's North Atlantic Blockading Squadron, under the command of Commander John Rogers, steamed up the James River from Fort Monroe to test the Richmond defences. The flotilla consisted of the ironclad gunboats, USS Monitor and Galena, the screw gunship Aroostook and the side wheeler Port Royal and the twin screw semi-submersible ironclad the USRC Nogatuck. At 7.05 Galena closed to within 600 yards of the fort and anchored but before Rogers could open fire two Confederate rounds pierced the lightly armoured vessel. The battle lasted over three hours and during that time, Galena remained almost stationary and took 45 hits. Her crew reported casualties of 14 dead or mortally wounded and 10 injured. Monitor was a frequent target, but her heavier armour withstood the blows. Contrary to some reports, Monitor, despite her squat turret, did not have difficulty bringing her guns to bear and fired steadily against the fort. Nogatuck sustained little damage compared to the Monitor and Galena due to her semi-submersible design, but had to withdraw when her 100-pounder parrot rifle exploded. The two wooden gunboats remained largely out of range of the big guns, but the captain of Port Royal was wounded by a sharpshooter. Around 11 o'clock, the Union ships withdrew to City Point. 
During the battle, Corporal John F. Mackey became the first Marine to earn the Medal of Honor. The massive fort on Drury's Bluff had blunted the Union advance, just seven miles short of the Confederate capital, at a loss of seven Confederates killed and eight wounded. Richmond remained safe. Rogers reported to McClellan that it was feasible for the Navy to land troops as close as 10 miles from Richmond, and some amateur researchers think the Union Army never took advantage of this observation. The area saw action again during the Siege of Petersburg. The Army of the James landed on May 5, 1864, at Bermuda 100, a neck of land north of the city point at the confluence of the James and the Appomattox rivers, only 15 miles south of Richmond. The army marched overland, advancing within three miles of Drury's Bluff by May the 9th. From a tactical perspective, Bermuda 100 allows a complete amphibious landing with less likelihood of counterattack than a landing five miles closer to Drury's Bluff and Fort Darling. If you found the information in this video informative, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. If not, please feel free to consider subscribing to the channel. And I thank you very much for watching and listening to this video.